we will take these uh, temperature variation from our uh, fluid flow analysis, apply them to um, to our model, and get the stresses. So once again, I think my Windows Media Player has some issues, so I will use VLC Media Player. Okay. okay. So this is again we go back to our model, inventory model. We activate the design that we are interested in. So here the design two here you can see of uh, the baffle, and this time we'll send this to our Autodesk mechanical simulation. So here mechanical simulation, which is the, the our environment to do stress analysis using finite element analysis. So. <clears throat> Once we are in our stress analysis environment, uh, the first thing we'll have to uh, choose would be the the type of analysis. In this case, we'll do a stress a static stress analysis, and then the second step would be again the uh, application of materials. So we'll select our uh, parts, the parts, especially the fluid parts. Here we are going to suppress because we don't need our fluid parts in the structural analysis they won't take any load so just deactivate them and we'll keep only the solid part the steel parts and define their material which is of course steel once this is done we'll then proceed to the mesh again mesh the model uh, we can review the mesh as Adam um, uh, suggested previously we can improve the mesh by refining techniques but here we will keep our uh, default mesh with, with, with a global refining that we just selected so we'll keep uh, global refining, refining here, which is um, okay for a stress uh, analysis based on thermal loads. So here what we are defining now is the material. If you have already defined your material in inventory, you'll get it here automatically, so you won't have to define it. But as I haven't defined it, I will take one of my uh, standard library material from uh, mechanical simulation environment. So once it's, it's done, we can proceed to our uh, boundary uh, conditions and loads. So the boundary condition here would be basically how the this heat exchanger is fixed or is, is clamped or fitted between piping or maybe there might be some supports as well which are sort of then fixed to wall or floor. So we are defining this here on the left side. We are considering that the, the um, heat exchanger is perfectly constrained so it cannot move maybe it's fitted to to a support here um, or, or the pipe is perfectly rigid which is uh, connected here uh, for the other uh, outlets and inlets we'll simply consider a tangential um, constraint that means it cannot rotate this surface cannot rotate uh, all the rest uh, so all the other two directions are free to move it can slide okay so we can imagine that there might be some uh, um, some dilatation joint or some flexible piping that will allow this uh, movement. Uh, now the next step is that uh, the symmetry condition again in the structural uh, part as well. So all the surfaces uh, that are uh, cut by our cut plane, our symmetry plane, we'll select them and we'll define a symmetry condition uh, about z-axis. So that will define that this again, this is half of the model, it's not the full model. So once this is done, we have all uh, our uh, boundary condition. The next step would be to apply uh, the temperature loads or the thermal loads, which will come from our fluid flow analysis. So we do have uh, a special uh, option in um, our mechanical environment, which basically allows you to get the fluid uh, um, temperatures. So basically the temperatures which are calculated from, from fluid flow by selecting that file, that um, uh, CFD file, corresponding CFD file, and then selecting the design scenario which will define the temperature variation. So we simply um, define uh, the location of the file uh, that correspond to the same project um, and mechanical will automatically get the temperature from those uh, reserves apply here in the structured environment as loads and do the calculation when you launch the analysis. So here we, we are in the result environment. We are just changing our uh, units for uh, more appropriate units in millimeters that will give stresses in megapascal. Uh, and what we are looking at here is displacement magnitude. So first thing again that we see, again, 
very simple logical sanity checks that here on the left side where you see the, the, the region in dark blue is where I define a thick support. So that means that this area does not move and which is uh, confirmed by this blue value which is zero. So it does not move. The maximum deformation is on the other side, uh, on the upper uh, right corner which is logical as well because that's the farthest point from our support which is 1.44 millimeters displacement. Uh, so very small um, displacement which is perfectly fine because we are only applying a temperature variation here. We can verify the temperature that are applied as a body load or as uh, loads from CFD by going to applied load temperature display just to make sure that we have we selected the right uh, values, temperature values or right input values uh, that correspond to this case. So again here red on the right which is air uh, inlet which is at 199.99 so almost 200 degrees Celsius okay so that confirms that yes we uh, applied the correct uh, set of results from CFD. So input is okay um, we confirmed our boundary condition the displacement looks okay and now we can go and see the bone mass stress distribution which again which uh, shows uh, uh, how far we are uh, on the strength limit of our model. We can simply click on maximum button to identify automatically what are the maximum, uh, where is the maximum point or where is the most critical uh, point in this uh, particular uh, design um, scenario. But again, what w is interesting for us generally is not a single point, it's the regions. What are the critical regions in our analysis? Because you can have one point at 506 megapascal and other point as at 500 megapascal which are quite similar, right? So, and there, of course, then there is a question of accuracy. So we will always consider zones and not, not just maximum points. So for that, there is a nice tool that we have in our all simulation tools where we can adjust the uh, the high value and low, low and high values manually. So I'm defining a high value of 300 megapascal, which may be my, uh, my elastic limit, which I don't want to cross. So here we can uh, see that anything that goes uh, red is 300 or above. So it highlights the the zones uh, that are at risk and here you can see that these are uh, principally the zones that are um, at the connection point between uh, tubes and the baffles or the baffles and the heat exchanger body. So basically the vents so can be very critical. Again the displacement uh, and uh, here we can talk about the point that Adam, Adam mentioned previously about the exaggeration of um, uh, the displacement. So every simulation tool has this scale uh, of um, a displacement uh, scale control. So we can uh, increase or exaggerate the scale. Again, don't forget that the maximum displacement is here, 1.5 millimeters. So what we are looking at does not correspond to 1.5 millimeter maximum displacement. It, it is uh, multiplied here on the screen. Uh, you can see by 22. Uh, so 22 twi times the real displacement. But this type of display helps a lot to better understand how the design will deform, right? So you can see that, okay, there will be some um, ten ten tensile forces between these uh, between the tubes and the baffles due to this type of deformation uh, and often you can find um, in some very minute details very easily with this tool okay <clears throat> so the last thing that we can uh, get from this analysis which is uh, an extra uh, thing but of course which is often necessary as well is the reaction forces how much reaction force will be generated at supports because once you constrain something and you have um, a, a, a pulling or pushing action on it then you will get a reaction so for example here on the left side where we think there will be a clamping with piping uh, due to the thermal uh, expansion there will be uh, some uh, forces generated and we are interested in that force so that can be obtained by using reaction force um, uh, feature we can get the total force here so this is the total force which is around 146 um, new uh, 146 kilos so we know that this is the force that will be generated here at the joint so that can help uh, design the joint in this particular case 
So that uh, was a quick overview of uh, this heat exchanger uh, design problem going through CFD part and the structure part. So we can have a better in-depth uh, insight into uh, the fluid behavior and the thermal behavior and the stresses that are resulted.